September has come and gone in a flash. I mean, I cannot believe that it's fall already. I mean, 2019 is almost over. Fall is a fantastic season. This is the season of cozy sweaters and boots and turning leaves and um, warm drinks, hot cocoa and apple cider, right? I like fall a lot. It's a season of transition. But now that September is over, that means it is time for me to share yet again another favorites video. My favorite Korean skincare products that I've been reaching for over and over again. My skin has been so good this month. It's been so balanced and I've just been reaching for the same products quite a bit. So today I've got a toner, an essence, a moisturizer. I have a brightening treatment for you guys, plus a little bit of a philosophical rant about ceramides. <music> So skin update for the month, my skin, knock on wood, cross fingers, right? So far is doing so good. It is so strong. It is so balanced. It is just so chill. Like there's really not that much going on with my skin. And we are on month two of my essential oil-free journey. I'm just so surprised that it's made such a huge impact on my skin, positive impact. Okay, so let's get started with the products. The first product I wanna talk about is a toner, my favorite skincare product ever. <laughs> you know, I love my toners and you know that this one was going to make the list this month. This is the Soon Jung pH 5.5 Relief Toner. This has been re recommended by you guys so much. So thank you for recommending this. I finally tried it. And as you can see by the bottle, I've used quite a bit of it. I'm loving this. Um, I'm really liking this. This is everything in a toner that I look for. It's super watery, super hydrating, absorbs really, really quickly. It's got a great minimal ingredients list and it just does the trick. This is super layerable too. I love layering my toners in that seven skin method. This is like so ideal for that because this just layers up like a dream. Deeply hydrates the skin, but it doesn't like build up on the skin. You know, sometimes when you layer your toner up, it can kind of get a little like greasy feeling on your skin. Even if the toner is not greasy, it gets greasy. This doesn't do that. So this is really ideal for layering up. Plus it's an affordable product. And you guys know, I love affordable products. I appreciate affordable products. And this just fits that so nicely. As I mentioned, you know, this has an, a minimal ingredients list and that is something that I have been gravitating towards more and more lately. You know, I don't think that minimal necessarily equals better, but I do appreciate minimal ingredients lists because it's like, there's just less to keep track of, especially with sensitive skin, you know, there's just less to be like, hmm, what irritated my skin, right? There's just, there's just less to worry about. This has a very minimal ingredients list, which I absolutely appreciate. This is a product too that I would say is a very simple product. You know, it's really hard for me to talk about this product on and on and on just because it's so simple. It's hydrating and it gets the job done. And there's nothing wrong with a simple product, by the way. Not always exciting, but this is a simple product that's been done well. You know, every ingredient in here, even though there's not that many, is here for a purpose and is serving a purpose. It is contributing to the overall formula with nothing extra. I was so, so pleased to find out that this toner is fungal acne safe. That is not something that you hear me say very often because quite honestly, I just don't know that much about fungal acne. And to be even more frank with you guys, every time I sit down to try to learn about it, I get overwhelmed. <laughs> I get overwhelmed because there's so many triggers, so many like no, no ingredients, right? It's overwhelming. And I really empathize with you guys who are struggling with this condition because I can't imagine how hard it is to find products that are fungal acne safe. So I'm actually really happy to tell you guys that this one is, and I'm really impressed that this one is because like I said, there's a lot of triggers for fungal acne and this just doesn't contain any of those. So I was really impressed by that. And so for me, this toner, it performs. I love the texture. I, I keep reaching for this. I, I've obviously slammed through my bottle quite quickly that this is love, right? But the reason why I really felt compelled to, to add it to the list, because like I said, this is a simple product that I can't really wax poetic on too much, 
but quite frankly, the reason why this made the list is because it is a simple product that has been done well. And that is just something that I am appreciating more and more in skincare. So the Skin Food Royal Honey Propolis Enrich Essence has been my like serum on rotation. I use this as a serum. I'm not exactly sure why it's called an essence. I certainly use this like a serum. And I have been reaching for this product over and over again this month. For me, as I mentioned earlier, my skin has just been so balanced lately that um, I have noticed that while I'm still including my moisturizing um, layers and products in my routine, I have cut back on so much nourishment. It has been a shock to me with my skin changes to find out that I don't need so much nourishment anymore because my skin is just sort of like regulating itself and controlling its dehydration and dryness. And it's definitely gone back to being a slightly more combination. So I haven't really been going for those heavier layers. I'm not too concerned about that because I know I'll be reading reaching for them in like two months when it's like freezing cold outside. So I'm not too concerned about it, but right now they're just not serving me and I've been reaching for more lightweight layers. Still going for moisture. And I think that's why this skin food, um, essence serum has been just on heavy rotation for me because this offers a lot of lightweight moisturization to my skin. And I'm literally just talking about the weight of the product itself. Let's talk about the benefits. So this is a propolis serum. Propolis has some really great brightening benefits. It's got a uh, great, uh, anti-inflammation benefits, anti-redness benefits. It can actually be really good if you suffer from acne as well. Now, I mostly reach for Propolis for its brightening benefits. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I've been really focused on brightening my skin. Now that my skin health is under control, I can start to work on these other goals. And this serum at first, I must tell you, I was like, I don't think this is working. <laughs> I love the texture. It feels nourishing, like lightly nourishing on the skin, but I didn't think that this was working for brightening. But you know what? I just had to stay patient. Just stay patient with this one because you will notice your skin is going to glow, glow with health. And I love that like glowy look. This will definitely give it to you, but you got to stay patient. Um, I was like, after like a week or two, I was like, mm, my skin doesn't look brighter with this. But then like on week three, I was like, oh, okay, I see it, I see it. So um, stay patient with this one. I also really like the formula of this. As I mentioned about the Soon Jung toner, I've been liking minimal um, ingredients lists. This is a very minimal product, but it packs a punch. Talk about simplicity done well, right? This has a lot of honey products in it. It is 63% propolis, 10% royal jelly, 10% honey extract. It's got two fermented ingredients in it. Like it is jam packed full of goodness for your skin. I really appreciate the formula of this. It's fragrance free too. This has been a great um, essential oil swap. Um, for the iUnique Propolis Synergy Serum that I absolutely have loved in the past. Did a lot of great brightening for my skin. Um, but, uh, you know, going essential oil free, I had to find some product replacements, some product swaps. And this was one of the Propolis serums that really fit the bill for Fra completely fragrance free, but it's got a good high quality amount of propolis in it, plus some other really great uh, ingredients in it as well. So I just feel like this is formulated really well. I'm loving what it's doing for my skin. It's also fitting really well into how my skin how my skin type is right now. Like I said, lightweight nourishment, lightweight moisture. This is absolutely the perfect weight for that kind of, of um, a product that I'm looking for. You know, this fits into my routine so well. This was just an easy product to work into my routine too because the texture just layers up really nicely. So I really can't complain too much about this. I've really been enjoying it. And I mean, not that it really matters all that much at the end of the day, but I mean this packaging, right? Like, let's just say this packaging is so, so darn cute. So you guys know last month I did this like huge Yes Style haul. And one of the first products that I pulled straight out of the box and started using immediately because I was so excited about 
trying this product, the Illy Yoon Ceramide Ado Concentrate Cream. And you also know that I have been impressed with this basically since day one. <laughs> um, I, I, you knew it was coming, right? You knew that this was product was going to be part of my favorites because I have been highly impressed with this very, very quickly for a couple of reasons. So this is a uh, ceramide cream, right? This is a moisturizer that banks on the star ingredient of ceramides. Ceramides great for your skin, right? They make up 50% of your skin. It's great for your moisture barrier. Um, ceramides definitely are an ingredient that get a lot of love. It deserves it, definitely. Um, certainly, it's not the only ingredient that can help your skin, but it's always nice to see them in a cream. I particularly, throughout the years, have found that creams that it contains ceramides in them, not just for my face, but also for my body skin, have just jived really well with my particular skin type. So this has ceramides in it. It's got cholesterol and fatty acids, some ceramide friends that I like to see um, on ingredients lists. What really impressed me though about this was the texture. The texture of this is so nice. It's a really silky cream. Um, it absorbs into the skin really, really nicely. This is a nourishing cream too, but it's like medium weight nourishment. It's not heavy. But what I really love about this that really like, as soon as I tried it, I was like, I love this is because there's no finish. There's no greasiness. There's no like um, heaviness on top of your skin. This absorbs down so quickly that this is so perfect for morning time use because you can put your sunscreen on like almost immediately. There's no wait time for it to absorb into your skin. And a lot of really nourishing um, creams have this like pitfall of being kind of greasy and heavy on the skin and this just isn't like that. It's so light. There's no, there's really no shiny or greasy finish to it, but yet still deep inside of your skin, it's moisturizing and nourishing. And I just love that about this cream. So I did want to touch upon a little bit of controversy surrounding creams that contain ceramides. Um, there is a Reddit post going on um, out there in the skincare community that is being shared. Um, and it basically what this, this post basically says is the ceramides that are contained in skincare products may not be as much as you think that there is. And I'm not particularly bringing this up because I want to uh, talk about the details of that post, not necessarily. Um, I know that a lot of us have seen this post. I, I've been asked about this post actually quite a bit um, and how I feel about it. And honestly, like, I just wanted to touch on this post because I think it is causing a lot of fear in the community um, around ceramide containing products, around uh, old time skincare community favorite classic products are now sort of getting trashed. I think a lot of people have read this post and have picked up their CeraVe moisturizing cream and have been like, F this and like throwing it away, right? Cause you're disappointed. And I get it because I am too. Um, I'm particularly disappointed to see CeraVe listed in this post. Now here's the thing. CeraVe has uh, been no stranger to ceramide controversy in the past. So, I mean, there's been, people have talked about the ceramide uh, content of CeraVe moisturizing cream for years. I think that healthy skepticism is important. It is vital because here's the thing. Um, you and I, we are consumers, right? I think that we're above average consumers because we like to educate ourselves. We like to learn about ingredients. We like to dive into some of the science, some of the science, <laughs> let's not overwhelm ourselves, but some of it, right? And we, we wanna know as much as we can about a product because we like to go into our purchases informed. But that being said, we're consumers, we're consumers, and we're at the mercy of marketing. And I think that's particularly what's so frustrating about um, this controversy that's going on is because a lot of us feel disappointed. A lot of us feel maybe even slightly lied to. Don't let your healthy skepticism, and I'm saying, I'm not saying this, this post is not important. It is important, we should be aware of this. But don't let your healthy skepticism turn into fear uh, don't let your healthy skepticism make you um, not want to try these products or or demonize products that you've loved in the past just because they've been named as maybe not containing a lot of ceramides. It's disappointing. It's disappointing. It's disappointing to, to find that a brand that's called CeraVe, right? Ceramides is in the name. CeraVe is 
probably deceiving us a little bit. They're, they're prob they probably are misleading us just a little bit, right? Um, yes, that is disappointing, but it works. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, particularly speaking about the, the CeraVe moisturizing cream, that product works for my skin. The first time I used it, it was honestly a revelation to me. It worked so well. This is the cream that I relied on with other products that I relied on with my moisture barrier issues. I cannot deny that one of the biggest players in me healing my skin was CeraVe moisturizing cream. I can't deny my experience. So what am I saying here? What I'm saying is don't let the healthy skepticism turn into fear. Don't make it turn your back or demonize products that you either are curious about or um, previously have used and loved. You know, don't because your experience is your experience. If something has worked, maybe it just wasn't the ceramides that worked for you. Maybe it was something else and that is okay. The thing is, and I've said this before on this channel, ceramides alone can't do it. They are a fabulous ingredient, do not get me wrong. And I have seen a big correlation between a lot of products that have worked well for my skin and ceramides being contained in it. I'm not denying that. But what I am saying is remember, there's a reason why we build skincare routines uh, and why we don't just use one product on our skin. I think the majority of us are using more than just one product on our skin, right? Especially if you're watching this video. Um, we know that it's a multi-layered approach. There's more to it than just one ingredient or one product or even uh, one skincare routine or even one week of using a product, right? We know that this takes multiple products, multiple ingredients. It's a multi-layered approach. I mean, we even know that ceramides work better with other ingredients like cholesterol and fatty acids. The point that I'm just trying to illustrate here is this is an important thing to be aware of, but just don't let it turn into fear because there's a lot of other things to consider. I just wanted to weigh in on that. This may or may not have anything to do with this product, but that controversy just, I couldn't ignore it. Um, I really wanted to address it with you guys because it's important, but don't let it don't let it scare you. So without further ado, I want to introduce you to this month's favorite product. This is the TM Arbitin Blending Powder. So this contains 5% Arbitin and 2% Niacinamide. Now Arbitin is a fabulous ingredient, but you don't find it in a ton of brightening products. At least I personally haven't seen it a ton, but I do regard it as being more effective than niacinamide when it comes to brightening the skin. Niacinamide is great, by the way. Arbitin, slightly better. And let me tell you, um, I've used Arbitin way back when, and I always thought that it worked a little better than niacinamide, but doing research into Arbitin fast forward to present time, it is actually known to be more effective for things like older hyperpigmentation and particularly sun damage. Um, because Arbitin, when you put it onto the skin, it does convert down into something called hydroquinone, which is actually something that dermatologists will prescribe you for these melanin based issues like, like old sun damage because it's highly effective. It is highly effective, but it is also highly irritating. <laughs> Potentially unsafe. It's actually even recommended for pregnant women to not use. This is a gentler alternative to that, by the way. Uh, Arbitin is a lot gentler with fewer to no side effects. It's certainly still something that you wanna introduce slowly into your skincare routine because there are potentials for irritation, but it's a lot lower than it's like prescription version um, counterpart, right? So Arbitin, very, very exciting, um, promising benefits to it, right? The 2% niacinamide in here, um, it has been noted that Arbitin, when formulated with niacinamide, actually works better. I think it helps to stabilize it. I'm not 100% sure on that, but it is good to see them both in here because it just helps. And of course, niacinamide has its own brightening benefits, so it's gonna kind of boost the formula. Let's talk about this, this particular product, though, now that we've kind of gotten through the ingredients, because what's a blending powder? It sounds kind of that's kind of different. <laughs> it is different. And that is actually why I wanted to include this on this month's list because 
This is so freaking easy to use. I love this. Okay, so what this is, it's a powder. You can blend this into your pre-existing toners, serums. Um, you can put this into, uh, like you can sprinkle this onto a sheet mask and make like a really special treatment for yourself. Um, this is really, really easy to add into your skincare routine because you're not, yes, you're adding a new product into your routine, but you're not adding ex exactly another layer into your routine. Somebody who loves to layer up like multiple products really appreciates that. I can get my brightening treatment in without having to change my routine up too much to accommodate a new layer, right? So this is a really interesting concept. Um, I've really been loving the delivery format of this so, so much. Um, this is really cool. I mostly blend this into toners and just apply it that way. I have occasionally, I don't do it a lot, but I occasionally make like a little bit more of a paste with it and do like a spot treatment, but mostly I just apply this all over my face for brightening. This works. This works. I honestly only use this once, maybe twice a week, just because, um, as I said, you do want to kind of like acclimate your skin to it a little bit. The first time I used it, I did notice a little extra dryness, like a little extra dehydration the next day. Um, but once I kind of got like slowly introduced it into my routine, now it really doesn't do, it doesn't, it doesn't dry out my skin or anything like that. I don't have any like side effects from using this. So, um, like I said, though, I still only use it one to two times maximum a week just to kind of keep things on the gentle side. But this works because <laughs> my skin brightens up so quickly after using this. I put this on at night and when I wake up, like clockwork, when I wake up the next morning, my skin just looks so glowy and so even toned. Um, I have noticed, now I have hyperpigmentation um, on my forehead area from a like popped pimple gone like so wrong. Anyways, this hyperpigmentation has been on my freaking forehead for four or five months. <sighs> it will really make you regret popping pimples, right? Um, so I've just been dealing with this same spot for such a freaking long time. But finally, I started using the Arbitin and it's really fading a lot faster all of a sudden. It's just like easier to cover up with makeup. I'm not noticing it as much. Like it's just fading so much faster, even faster than it was with just using the niacinamide. So I'm impressed. I'm impressed. And I do have... Um, as I said, some sun damage, some older sun damage that has emerged. Fun thing, right? Whenever you um, have damaged your skin with the sun, it emerges years later, <laughs> becomes more visible years later. Um, it's going to take some time for me to work on those, but I'm really feeling like Arbitin is the best choice for that. So twofold, it's a fantastic ingredient that, that works, but this delivery method works so well for me too, because I don't have to add in another layer. So I really appreciate that. So that's four of the products that have really made a huge impression on me this month, and I just cannot stop reaching for them. So let me know, is there a product that has recently impressed you? Let me know what product it is in the comments. And of course, feel free to uh, weigh in on that ceramide rant. I definitely wasn't planning on like going that that deep with it. Uh, I really wasn't, but I guess I just felt compelled to speak what was in my heart. It was just, it was really in there. And I'm curious to know what you guys think about this this post that's going on on Reddit. How do you guys feel about ceramides? And, and how do you feel about maybe there not being as many ceramides in some of your favorite products as you were led to believe? I'm really curious to know your take on this. So let me know in the comment box below. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. I release two new K beauty focus videos every single week. And don't forget to become part of the notification squad so you're never out of the loop when that new video drops. I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. I hope you're having a fantastic day and I'll talk to you soon in October. Bye guys.